the SMY Pocket Mod. Put it in your pocket and go. Pocket Mod my ass. This damn thing, it may be ergonomical, may feel good in the old hand. It may be small, but it sure is freaking heavy. This thing is heavy for its size. It's damn near as heavy as this Cube 2, the Smock Cube 2. And I mean, look at the size difference. Damn near. I mean, it's as heavy. But when I first popped it in my shirt pocket, I mean, it weighed it down. It damn near ripped the pocket off. So yeah, here's the deal. This device is for the guys and gals that want something that's heavy, okay? It feels of good quality. It feels good in the hand. And it's for the guys that want that. But, for you guys that want something light, man, <laughs> this ain't for you. So as you guys can see, the performance is great. It all depends on the device you have on here. But everything about this, I have been enjoying. I've been using it for two months, two freaking months, putting it through its paces. And I got to say, man, this thing, it delivers for sure, especially for the price point. Okay, I've got a sub tank mini on here, and I've got the RBA section here. The build I have in here is a .75 ohm build using A1 26 gauge Canthal. And I'm vaping at only 19 watts. Only 19 watts, which is uh, 3.7 volts. At 19 watts, she kicks some ass. This is a single 18650 device, by the way. I mean, I've gone a whole day, day and a half. It doesn't even show that the battery gauge is halfway uh, depleted. But yeah, if you're vaping at 19 watts, hell, like I said, a day and a half, I could probably get two, two and a half days out of this sucker. Even up to 30 watts to get good battery life. You know, if I go over 40 watts, and this thing, it vapes up to 60 watts, by the way, you know, at 60 watts, you, it's going to deplete the battery fast. Been there, done it. Like I mentioned, this pocket holds a single 18650 battery. You could vapor between 3 and 60 watts. In regular mode, you could build it all the way down to 0.1, all the way up to 3 ohms. And then in temperature mode, that's right, this has a temperature mode. You could build it all the way down to 0.1, all the way up to 1 ohm. Pros for me, okay, first of all, I love the size. I love how heavy this thing is. It is ergonomical. It feels great in the hand. The screen on this, the menu screen, it's easy to use the menu screen. It's easy to get in the menu screen. You'll see in the close-ups, but I love this screen. It's massive, big, bright, and beautiful. Buttons are nice and clicky. For me, the battery life has been great, but I've only been using tanks on here. I've been vaping between, you know, 19, 18, 19, 20, up to 30, 35 watts. Mostly, I've been using this sub-tank mini. If you're the type of guy that wants to put a dripper on here with a 0.1, 0.2 ohm build and vapor at 60 watts, I mean, your battery life is going to suck. And I never do builds like that for this. Now, I've done nickel builds, and I've built it down to 0.1 with nickel, and it works, and it works. It's efficient, man. It's consistent. I've done regular Canthal builds, Nichrome builds. You know, if I'm going to use a dripper for this, I'm going to build a 0.5 and above. It's going to be more chill vape. <laughs> Every tank that I own, every RDA I own, hell, every delivery system device that I own fits down and makes a connection for this mod. So before I go over the cons, I'm going to go ahead and dive down, show you this thing up close and personal, show you the mini screen, how to get into the mini screen, all that good stuff. Then we'll come back and let you know where you can get one and we'll wrap it up. Yeah? Here's the packaging for this SMY Pocket Mod. Pop the lid, and then inside we got our pocket mod. Got a little ribbon to make it easier to pull this sucker out. And then underneath that, we got a quality control certificate. And then underneath that, we got a manual. First, the dimensions 82 millimeter by 46 millimeter by 26 millimeter. So let's go ahead and take a little tour. Here's the front of the device where you have your menu screen. We'll get into that in a second. So on one side of the mod, you got your fire button up top and your waters up, waters down buttons down below. Nice clicky buttons. And then on the other side of the mod, you have your serial number or my serial number, in this case, 169. And here's the bottom of this device. You got your USB port for charging and you got your holes for battery venting. And I do want to point this out, okay? I got a scratch there, a scratch there, and a small little blemish there where it's taking the finish off this device is black finish. And I do want to state this. The only reason why these have scratches right there is because I place it on the desk, okay? And every time I place it on the desk, it's doing that right there. It's going to take the finish off over time. You're going to put this thing through abuse. But again, I'm only sitting in my desk. I'm editing videos. I'm shooting videos. That's what I do. If you work outside, if you're in landscape construction, for example, you place this thing in your pants pocket with coins, with keys. It's going to do a lot more damage. Guarantee it. And I've got to mention that. Up top, you got your 510 connection with a spring-loaded pin. And up close, look at those 510 threads. Here's the back panel, and as you guys can see, it's got that carbon-esque finish or feel going on, and the logo you guys are seeing right now is the Project Sub-Ohm logo. Again, here's the base of this device. You get your fingernail in here, and you pull this up, and that's how you get it off, the back panel, and it is a magnetic back panel. You got a magnet up top and down below. And here's the inside of this mod. You got your magnet up top and down below. That's how this thing secures with the back panel. Here's your battery tray. Like I mentioned, this holds a single 18650. Negative side up, positive side down. Make sure you line it up to where the clip is at the bottom. 
boom, it clips into place. And you know, this back panel really doesn't move around that much. There's not much wiggle room. I mean, just a little bit. Most magnetic back panels have it, but this thing, it doesn't have that much at all. One last fast tour of this device. Oh yeah, before we move any further, SMY, the manufacturer of this device, they market that the casing is manufactured out of zinc alloy. So in order to turn this sucker on, three clicks the fire button does it. One, two, three. The first thing you're going to see is this SMY logo, and then you're going to see no atomizer detected because there's nothing screwed onto this mod. And then when you go to press that fire button, what's it going to say? Oh, no atomizer detected. Go figure. So what I went ahead and did was I dropped the exposure so you can see this screen even more clear. Beautiful, bright screen like I mentioned in FaceTime, but up here you got the battery gauge. You got the puff counter, the resistance, the voltage, the amps, the date, the wattage, the time, the speedometer, and then down here you got setting icons. Power off, lock, more in-depth settings, and then information about this device. Now watch this. We're going to hit this fire button and watch what happens. Oh, we got our resistance reading. Set to 20 watts now, 3.9 volts, 5.1 amps. And when I press this fire button, watch what happens. The wattage turns red and the counter turns red. And I have it set to cut off at 5 seconds. So right now I have it set to 3 watts. Now you can vape this thing between 3 and 60 watts. Watch what happens when I press the up button, the wattage up button. Watch the speedometer. Oop, boop, boop, boop. It's jumping up. And it jumps up pretty fast. Time to go back down. Look at that speedometer. Pretty cool. And you can always scroll up just like this. Or scroll down just like this as well. You don't have to hold it down. Now to go ahead and get into the menu icons, all you do is hold down the fire button three times. One, two, three. And as you guys can see, this power icon is highlighted. Now to scroll to the right, all you do is hit the wattage down button. To scroll to the left, hit the wattage up button. And whenever you have the icon highlighted that you want to get into, all you do is hit the power button to get in there. Right now we have the uh, power icon highlighted. Hit the fire button and it says shut down, yes or no to scroll. Hit the wattage down button over to no. Hit the wattage up button over to yes. Hit the power button and it shuts down. Three clicks the fire button to turn it back on. One, two, three. Three clicks the fire button to get down to these icons. One, two, three. We're going to scroll over to the next one. Hit the waters down button. Scrolls over to lock. Hit the fire button. Lock the button or lock this device. Yes or no. Scroll between the waters up and the waters down buttons. No. Yes. Yes, it is. Hit the fire button. And she is locked. You can't fire her up. You can't adjust the wattage. Nothing. To unlock her, all you do is hold down the waters up and the waters down buttons down at the same time. And she is unlocked. Oh, yeah. You can adjust the waters up. Wattage down, and we are good to go. Once again, hit the fire button three times to get down to these icons. One, two, three. Scroll over to the in-depth settings. Hit the fire button, and in there you see system settings. It should say system settings, but it says work mode. You can change it between power, temperature control Celsius, temperature control Fahrenheit. You can change the time settings. You can change vapor mode between manual and automatic, date and time, puffs info, stealth mode, and exit. And to scroll down, you tap the wattage down button, and it does round robin. And you can also tap the wattage up button and it also round robins. Alright, so now that we're back at work mode, it is highlighted. You can switch her over to temperature mode by hitting the fire button, TC, temperature Celsius, and it automatically round robins the exit. And all we do is hit the fire button and boom, it takes us to the menu screen where it says 310 degrees Celsius. We can adjust that, scroll down, all the way down to 90 degrees Celsius, all the way up to 315 degrees Celsius. I'm going to go ahead and get back into the settings and switch it over to temperature Fahrenheit. Work mode is highlighted. It says TC. Hit the fire button and it says TF, temperature Fahrenheit. Hit round robins down to exit. Hit the fire button and it says 590 degrees Fahrenheit on the mini screen. Scroll down. And you can vapor between 200 degrees Fahrenheit and 600 degrees Fahrenheit. I'm going to go ahead and switch her back to power because that's what we have it set to. Wattage mode, hit the fire button again, and boom, we're back to power. The next system setting highlighted is time setting. Hit the fire button, and boom, it says overtime. That's the first setting within the time setting. Five seconds, that's what it's set to, which means when I hit the fire button, it is set to fire for five seconds, and then it automatically cuts off. We can go ahead and switch that. Hit the fire button while that's highlighted, and we can adjust it while it's red. We can adjust it up, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, let's say we wanted to fire for ten seconds before it cuts off. Then we hit the fire button, and that's set. Now hit the water's down button or the down button to scroll down LCD off that means that in 60 seconds this thing is going to cut off the uh, the screen now we can adjust that by hitting the fire button while it's highlighted adjust it to three minutes three minutes max two minutes second max 60 seconds and then you can scroll down from there I'm going to keep it at 60 seconds though 
whenever I have it set, hit the fire button. Now auto shut down. That means the device cuts off completely. I have it set to 60 minutes. Hit the power button, go in and set that. Three minutes. Never. 60 minutes is fine with me. Hit the fire button to set it. Exit, hit the fire button. Now vapor mode, I'm not really a big fan of it, but you can switch it to automatic, hit the fire button. Let me show you how this works. So I have it set to fire for 10 seconds before it cuts off. All I have to do is hit the fire button once until this turns red. It's going to automatically fire for 10 seconds. I don't like that setting at all. You're gonna burn the shit out of your coil if you're not careful. So I'm gonna go ahead and switch it back to manual. There we go. All right, date and time. You can switch the date and time, year, month, day, hour, minute. Puff counter. And now to reset it, it says reset puffs. All you do is hit the fire button when it's highlighted and boom, it resets it. Stealth mode, no. All we do to say yes to take it in stealth mode is you hit the fire button when it's highlighted and boom, yes. Exit, yes. Now it doesn't look like it's in stealth mode now, but look at that, stealth mode on, it cuts off. When we fire it, oh yeah. To go ahead and switch it back, three clicks to get in. One, two, three. Hit the fire button to no, exit, and we're good to go. Now this last icon is question mark. It's basically information about this product, about the chip, etc. One, hit the fire button to two, three, four, five, and six. And it automatically takes it back to the menu screen when you scroll past the sixth page. So that right there, boys and girls, is an up close look at this pocket mod by SMY. Let's go ahead and take her back to FaceTime. First con, the fire button rattles like a motherfucker. Second con, the USB port, as you guys saw in the close-ups, is at the base. It needs to be on the side. If I have a device on here, how am I going to charge it? I'm going to lay it down. It's going to leak everywhere. I have to take off a device every time I have to charge it. <laughs> no. Put the damn charging port on the side. Once again, I gotta mention this for you higher wattage vapors. The guys are gonna be vaping this at its max 60 watts. You're gonna run through battery life so fast, it's gonna be like nothing else. It's gonna be like diarrhea trying to run out of a butt. Ew. Fourth con, most if not all the devices I own, when I screw it onto this mod, there tends to be overhang. You see that right there, boys and girls? This is a 22 millimeter device, and I mean, look at the overhang on all three sides. When you first boot this thing up, one, two, three, four, five, okay, you turn her on. The first time I hit the fire button, there's a delay. There was like a two second delay. But as the coils heat up, I mean the delay, it diminishes. Still gotta be mentioned as a con though. And one last con I found for this, and this is gonna be a subjective one. Like I mentioned in temperature mode, it's consistent. Temperature mode, it kicks ass, but I wish you were able to build below 0.1. Unfortunately, you're not able to with this device. So the shop that sent this device to me to review for you guys is a shop by the name of VaporDNA, VaporDNA.com. I'll have a link down in the description. And right now, they're selling this puppy for $89.99. That's right, $89.99. Now on to the big question, the big answer of the day. Hey, Rip! If if you lost this today, would you go out tomorrow and buy one? And the answer is definitely $89.99 for what you get. I've been using this for two months. It hasn't failed on me yet. Temperature control has been super consistent. Power mode has been consistent. Everything. I like everything about it. You know, in temp mode, I wish you were able to build down to .05. But to be honest with you, I've been using this mostly in just regular power mode and have loved it. It's small. It's compact. It is heavy. If you don't like heavier devices, you're probably not going to like this. But I like heavy devices, okay? Like I said, two months I've been using this. It's been kick-ass. Hell yeah buy it. This is Rip Trippers and remember smoking is dead, vaping is the future and the future is now.